Hey guys, Talem here, and in this final episode of the step-by-step -step Witcher 3 mod installation instructions, we wrap up the install of all my chosen mods, we get the script merging underway and complete, so let's wrap this up so we can begin our adventures in The Witcher 3. Okay, now we're back to our little mod list here. Now the no merge ones, these ones are going to be installed last. That's because if I reach a point where all of a sudden the game doesn't want any more mods, I kind of have to pick between these ones, of which ones I'm going to use and which ones that I am not going to. They're mainly cool little features, minor improvements, this cool additional little stuff, but they're not really the like must have to play. That is this entire list right here. These are the necessities that we are going to get installed in this next step. All right, what we're going to do now is we are going to install our first series of mods. So the next step is to install the colored map markers and the show all quest objectives on the map. Now, this isn't objectives that you haven't attained yet. This is just showing you the markers of all the quests you have available in your log. So we're going to go ahead and install both of those. If I can find them. Let's go with colored map markers. Let's slap that in there. And then we're going to go with the uh, map objectives. Let's put that in there as well. I'm going to rename just a little bit because I don't like the name being so long. I'm pushing everything to one side. There we go. I, I can rename this one too. This is just for my sake. This is not you guys have to do. I'm just a stupid head and a stickler to, to have things labeled just the way that I want them. Now, some of these mods need extra setups beyond just installing them in the list. So I typically like to install all my mains that are just a simple installation process. And then I go back and start doing the much more complicated ones, that, the ones that require key bindings, the ones that have extra files that need to be installed. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, get all the easy to install mods out of the way. Let me see here. Okay, it says skill points per level. There we go. All right, I have that in there. Let's go ahead and let's grab the next one here. Let me see here. We did this one, this one. Yes, set the level of the guards. I really like this one. Is it my, I don't rename this one. I don't like that. I don't like the fact that the game just has guards that can kick your ass just to keep you in line. <laughs> All righty. Let's go ahead and um, install Fast and Deadly Combat. All right, there's another mod that I use to adjust the combat in the game. All right, what other ones here are simple and easy to install? Sword everything. We can go ahead and throw that in there. That's uh, simple to set up. And uh, I think we may actually... All right, we can go ahead and stop at this point. These are all of our one-click, easy-to-set-up main mods. Now, after this, what I normally do is I do run script merger just to kind of get an idea of what's going on on the field. And there's only one or two scripts that need to be done. See, there's actually none. And that is a very good thing. No conflicting scripts. So we can go ahead and close this. Now, what we can actually do, we can actually run the game at this point. There may not be any conflicts between the mods, but there still could be an error in a mod that you install. So let's go ahead and run the game. It should do its little tabulating thing. And then we're going to go ahead and see if we have these mods properly installed. All right, so the game opens. So we know that there wasn't any errors in the script, and that is a very positive start. Let's go over to options here. We should now have a mods button. And there we go. Fast and deadly combat. We have our little sliders. Set the level of the guards. Everything seems to be working right. Sort everything seems to be okay. Set points per level. We can turn it on. Switch this up all the way to five. Awesome. All right, everything seems to be perfect and ready to go. Awesome. All right, let's back out of here and get back to work. All right, we're back at the desktop and we know thus far that our initial setups of these mods are working Perfectly. No conflicts, no errors. Everything seems to be in order. And now we're going to get into the more complicated mod setups. All right, guys, the two mods that I'm going to show you how to install next is New Game Plus Combat as well as Random Encounters. 
Now, Random Encounters is a little bit of an older mod, but it still functions. And it has some steps that none of the other mods that I have installed utilize. It's because it uses a method that I don't think that many mods these days are made to worry about using. But the Random Encounters mod is so awesome, I just have to have it. So we will go ahead and do that one as well. But first, we're going to go ahead and do the New Game Plus Combat mod. Because of the two, it is definitely the easier of them. So let's go ahead and get that installed. Let's go ahead and rename it. Let's get rid of that 1.5 just because I don't like it. And you too. Don't need no versions in there. That's just me. I'm just weird like that. <laughs> All right. So this part is installed and that is done. But there is more steps that you need to do. And the mod page, which I am right here, it'll tell you the steps that need done. So once you have it installed, make sure that uh, you follow the steps. Because some people, you know, they learn by doing. But when it comes to mods, it's just reckless not to at least have a functioning understanding of what the mod author is saying you, of how you need to install a mod. If you don't follow the directions and you screw it up, you could end up undoing a lot of hours of work into modding. All right. It's very important that you read all notes like this one says right here. If you're level 101 plus and looting doesn't work, this explains to you how to fix it. That's because this mod actually will allow you to go beyond level 100, which is the cap put into the game by the NG plus mode of Witcher 3. All right. So if you think that's going to be a problem, well, then he gives you the link of a mod that will fix that for you. So it's very important to know exactly what's going on with every mod that you install. But the point of uh, this mod here is our next step is we have to set up the hotkeys. Now, I don't use a lot of the hotkeys for any of the mods. You can actually pick and choose which hotkey you want to use. And if I want to change it, I'll go into the mod menu. I don't need a hotkey on the fly to do it. So some of these hotkeys, I just don't add. But things like uh, toggle jumping, combat jump. Because for some weird reason in The Witcher 3, you can't jump while in combat. Makes zero sense to me. We're going to go ahead and just copy the hotkeys that I want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy all of them for the moment. All right, there we go. And then what we need to do is we need to go to our My Documents folder. So let's go ahead and um, we can just use this one here. Let's go to My Documents, go into The Witcher 3, and we're looking at the input settings right here. Make sure you're using the right one, not the user settings. And if you want, we've already backed it up once. You can back it up again if you want. If I successfully input keystrokes in for a mod and then I test it and everything seems to be okay and works fine, I will typically make an additional backup at that stage. I'll call it like input.settings. Then an abbreviation of the name of the last mod that I had modified that file to be functioning with. Therefore, if I modified another mod and end up screwing up this file, I can just delete the, that one, re-enable the most recent modified file, and then I'm not all the way back at square one. I'm just back at the settings that I had before I attempted adjustments with the mod that screwed it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the input.settings here. And as the instructions say, you just cut and paste this under the combat section, but also do it under combat replacer Siri as well. Because those of you know, there are some scenarios where we play as Siri. Now, you don't have to scroll down and look for combat because the game will automatically reorder everything here. So you don't need to worry about it. You can just manually type it in at the top if you want. Or you can search for bracket combat. Let's go ahead and paste it. Uh, for some reason, you get these spaces in the beginning here. So you're going to kind of have to delete them all. I know it's annoying. But hey... Sometimes you got to do annoying things. Those of you who are married know what I'm talking about. All right. <laughs> and at this point, before I actually modify the Siri branch, I want to get rid of everything that I'm not going to use. There's no point in having it here if I'm not going to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I don't want this one. Pause. No, I don't want to pause. Don't want to slow it down or speed up. Don't need any of that fancy schmancy nonsense. Combat taunt, combat jump. I'll go ahead and leave that. Toggle looting within combat. No, I don't need that. Even toggle jumping. No, because I can just 
I can toggle that within the mod menu, so I don't need that. Strafing in combat, no, I don't need any of that nonsense either. So see, I'm down to just two. Let's go ahead and copy that. Now at this point, I want to go ahead and just search for the word Siri. There we go. And then I can just space it and just slap that in there real quick. There we go. That's because you want to make sure to have those abilities available between Siri and Geralt. All right, that's closed. That seems to be going okie dokie. Let's close this right here. Any other settings that you need to make, just go ahead and peruse it real quick. Nope, nothing that applies to us. This will explain the mod to you and all the various settings, but that's for you guys to figure out, not me. <laughs> All right, guys, this is a good point to show you what happens when you have a script conflict, what the game is going to give you in feedback, and so you know, hey, that is what the issue is. So we're just going to run the game real quick, and you're going to see firsthand what happens when you have a scripting issue. It is do its little Red Engine 3 check. And at a certain point, you're going to get a pop-up just like this one, that explains to you, hey, something is messed up. Now you probably wonder, well, how do I fix it? Well, that's where the script merger tool comes in. Now I'm gonna show you just briefly how to use it to show you how to fix it with just these two mods installed. So let's go ahead and just run it real quick. All right, as you can see here, we have a list of conflicting scripts. In fact, one, two, three, four, five of them. Let's go ahead and select them all. Some people like to do it one at a time. I just select them all at one time. I haven't seen any difference between doing them individually versus selecting them all in batch. So go ahead and click on create five selected merges. All right. This is what you want to see. You want to see a number, a number, and then zero. Zero means that there was no unresolved conflicts. So click on OK. Boom. We have a conflict that the program could not fix in fact we just have one and that is not too bad if that number was a lot higher then you have a lot of work cut out for you and you might want to choose between the two conflicting mods which one you actually want to use but here is just one and it's actually really easy to resolve let's go ahead and click on okay there now here highlighted in yellow is the discrepancy between the script for a new game plus combat and set the level of the guards now if you look over here this is the vanilla script and as you can see, this line here is the same as this line, is the same as this, this line. And then this line is the same as this one and this one. That way you know that it's these lines in between that you need to fix. This here is your result. So what you're going to do is you're going to go down here to where it says Merge Conflict. Right click, and I'm going to use this one as a basis. So select line from B. As you can see, this one's listed as B, this one's C. So we're going to choose B. And there you go but that will just make this mod work it will not make this one work so what we have to do is we have to kind of see that both of these were between the same variables so you we're just going to go over here we're going to select this here and we're just going to copy it we're going to go down to here and we're going to add it right after this one but before the remove timer that they both need to be so just hit enter paste it let's go ahead and delete that and then there you go your variables are set and everything should be okie dokie. Let's go ahead and save and quit. There we go. Click on OK. And there you go. All the scripts are loaded and everything seems to be fine. Only way to really find out is to try to run the game and to find out exactly what happens. All right. And the game loaded up just fine. And it's looking good. We don't seem to be having any issues. Now, we did do some key bindings for the jumping and the combat jump. Unfortunately, that mod isn't set up to have them listed under key bindings. That's something you're just gonna have to remember yourself. Some mods actually have it where you can do adjustments here, but that mod doesn't. But for me, it's only two keys to remember to taunt and then the other one to actually jump itself. The initialization of the settings can be done right within the new game plus combat menu right here. See, jumping can be enabled, looting can be enabled. This is all in combat. So there you go. There's all the different things that you can change there. Let's back out of it. Back out. Let's exit out. And ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum, we're back here on the desktop. And everything seems to be actually okay so far. <laughs> but uh, you know what? It may not stay that way. 
But uh, let's open up script merger again, and I'm going to delete to those scripts that we had fixed, because no doubt I'm going to have to redo these scripts anyway. So I'm going to select them all, click on delete, and there you go. We go back to how it was before, because none of these changes that are made are done to the files directly into the game. It actually makes a separate uh, file for here that you didn't see because I didn't close the mod manager to refresh the list. It'll be actually called merge files instead of merge pack. The merge pack is from the, uh, the mod merger program. Merge files will be from this one. Okay. So we can just go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to close this to refresh it. There we go. Didn't really need to do that, but... You know, we do quirky things. We all do it. <laughs> Alright, we're going to go into now installing the Random Encounters mod. Now, the Random Encounters mod is actually one of the more complicated setups than any of the other mods on the Nexus. There's just a lot more steps involved. It may seem a little bit daunting, but in the end, it's, it's, it's really not. I'm going to hopefully do a good enough job to convince you guys of that. So, what we're going to do first is of course we are going to install the mod itself so let's click on open let us do its thing and throw it in there got a rename let's get rid of that click on ok there we go now here on the page it's actually going to tell you that you need to have bootstrap and shared imports also installed now those are two uh, modders resources that Actually, this is the only mod that I'm going to use that uses those. And unfortunately, there is no other random encounter mod available that uh, doesn't utilize the extra mods. So you know what? If you want to use random encounters, you're going to have to install the bootstrap here. The script hooked edition. Let's go ahead and rename that. Okay. And then we're going to install the shared imports. There it is right there. All right, let's give that in this little rename to keep everything uniform. My quirkiness. All right, now that, now that that's done, you can go down here. There's all these instructions that you need to do, but it's always a good idea to jump over to these two pages and to make sure there's nothing special that you need to do for these guys. All right, let's go over to shared imports. It tells you how to install it, but there is no special instructions involving this particular mod so you don't need to actually worry about it all right back to random encounters then all right we've gone ahead and installed the mod as well as bootstrap and the shared imports and then this is go ahead and tell us what the next step is now these here have already been done that is because the mod manager does an excellent job of placing everything where it needs to go so these first three steps are pretty much done. We can go right to step four. Now step four has to do with modifying the bootstrap content itself. So let's go back to bootstrap because we never close the window. And we need to go into content, scripts, local, and find the mods registry WS, click on that. All right, and we need to make this look like this. So basically we want to copy this line right here exactly with the semicolon at the end go back to here and we need to place that right into here now looking at this we can see that all these uh double slash lines we don't even need these these are just telling you crap about what you put here and then we can go ahead and just paste that in there you don't have to have it all the extra lines like this one has i mean if you want it to look identical you can you can hit enter twice if it just bugs you that much and then you save it all right, that's done. We don't need this open anymore. Let's go ahead and close this as well. All right, so step four is basically done. All right. Now, step five here says if you had not made any changes to your input.xml, input zerdy, zerdy on I, yada, 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 you can just cut and paste everything from this mod directly into that location. So we can go ahead and do that. Let's uh, go to mods. Where's random encounters? Let's go to the alternative bin folder, the bin, config, blah, 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 all the way down to legacy base. Let's copy all of these. And we are going to go to the exact same location in the Witcher 3 install, which is bin, uh, config, 
are for game legacy base and there they are right there now what you want to do first is you want to go to new folder VAK and you want to back up anything you're replacing always back it up and then paste in the new ones that's because if these somehow are screwy or something isn't working you can easily grab the unmolested ones all right so that's would be all for those particular gems but there is some adjustments we need to make to the um, XML folder. So we're going to scroll all the way back to uh, right here. We got to make sure th this one should already be installed. We're going to go ahead and uh, what changes does this one make? Okay, there we go. We, we don't need to copy this one exactly. I would rather do it manually. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into your Witcher 3 install. We're going to go to bin. We're going to go to config, to R4 game, to user config matrix, PC, and we're going to open the input XML folder file. All right. Now, this one's pretty, pretty easy as well. What we have to do is copy this following here. What? Okay, no, I had it right. Copy this right here, and we want it to copy it just like it says, and it has to look just like this. So if you look at the file here, you can see it has um, visible vars. That's it right there. And then it has the exclamation dash dash builder. There it is right there. It'll give you something that you need to look for, what you need to search for and where you need to put it. All right. So what we need to put this is we need to put this right in between this line and that line, just like that. Now, if you want, if you want it all to look the same, I mean, you could hit tab. And then, and then move it over if, if you just are stickler for making it look as close to this as possible. But the formatting here and the formatting here are different. I mean, I kind of look at some of these others. See, the VARs are pushed even further over. So we can probably actually have this even more. I mean, if we want to get technical to have everything lined up. <laughs> you don't have to do it that way. But I'm just going to do that anyway. Because I'm stupid like that. So. There you go. And we go ahead and close that, and we can close that, and we look at the list here. Now it's telling us to go into the game, so yeah, are we done with this? I don't know. Maybe. It's always a good way to check out, and that's to run your script merger, see if there's any problems. Now, we're all going to get the conflicts that we had with the other mods that we had installed, but we will get some new ones. As you can see here, you can look down, and it'll tell you what's conflicting. Bootstrap and New Game Plus Combat have a conflict right here in the player.ws. So we'll select them all and we'll go ahead and create six merges. Now this see this is why I do usually all my script merging at the end. But, but considering this is kind of a tutorial and we're kind of going through the mods and their setups, we're probably gonna be merging and unmerging quite a bit. But don't worry, it doesn't hurt anything. It keeps it clean when it's uh when it's done. So let's create we have six to do, and we have the one conflict that we had last time. So we're gonna fix that the exact same way. We're just gonna take this, we're gonna tell this one to go to B, we're gonna hit enter, we're gonna paste that in there, and we're gonna delete these two, and then we're gonna exit and save. Save and quit. This one has two conflicts, and that's a good example. As you can see, they're both using up the same line, and they're more or less identical. I mean, there's a few differences. You don't really need to worry about spaces and that kind of thing. So we're just going to copy this one. And we're going to tell this one to use B. And what we're going to do is we're just going to paste this right at the end of it. We're going to get rid of that. There you go. And it looks good. Now you're going to go to the next area. You can go to movement. Go to go to next unresolved conflict. And it takes us right back to this. And we have the exact same problem. But it's a little different. As you can see here. This bottom line here has been carried over. That's because here it was blank. So there was no problem. So you're going to have to make sure that when you say to use a line, not to use this one because you want these two lines together. You want it to go from B. Then you want to paste just above that line. Copy it. And you want to stick it right in there. Just like that. Just get rid of these two tab marks. And there you go. Now everything should actually be Perfect. Let's save and exit. There you go. No errors, no fuss, no muss. Now at this point, we're going to go ahead and run the game. Let us do this little script tabulation. And then we'll see what we can see inside the game. 
Hopefully no errors. That's what I would like to see. Because there are chances I might have missed something. That happens all the time. Believe me, it's, it's not this smooth when I do it on my own. <laughs> there's there's always something. See, it starts to minimize. So annoying. Alright, so let's go to options. Let's go to mods. Deadly encounters mod. Main. Everything seems to be okay. Let's turn on the defaults. Day. Let's go enable the defaults. Nights. Monster list. Recommended. Now, you can actually customize this. You can either go for the presets, or you can actually determine what what monsters appear, where, all this kind of stuff. And it is compatible with all the DLCs. It has the Bruma, I think, in there and stuff, if you want to just make yourself a, have a, live, a Bruxa. If you want to have a, a living nightmare, <laughs> or high vampires, even. It's actually really cool. A lot of very awesome stuff. That's why I just have to have it. That's why I deal with having the few extra mods in my load order. Because it's something that just really adds to the game to be running through the hillside. And then all of a sudden, a, a random thing of, I don't know, Neckers appear out of nowhere that weren't there before. <laughs> it's just kind of little surprises. And I, I like uh, fun surprises in a game. And the next task we're going to do is just to make sure that Random Encounters mod actually was installed... Properly now, I know we went in here and we um, Looked at the mod settings and whatnot, but what I failed to do is actually jump into the game Because the way bootstrap works that if the mod is not properly installed You won't get a certain notification. So we're gonna jump into the game and see if that notification pops up Hopefully it does that means we did it right All right, see down there corner, you see Random Encounters mod enabled. If you don't get that, it's not installed properly. That is through the bootstrap. Remember, we did that little script edit when we put in those lines and got rid of the forward slash lines. Now, that was what that was about. If that doesn't pop up, that means you have a problem. That means you need to go back, redo the steps, make sure everything is done proper. All right, guys. Now that step is out of the way. Let's move on to the next one. We got so much to do. All right, guys, now the mods that remain are not really complicated. I pretty much shown you all the various different scenarios involved with installing a mod for Witcher 3. So at this point, I am just going to get everything installed. And then we are going to jump to dealing with the complicated script merger that will result from having all your mods put into the game and you just really want to play, but you have these script errors and you need to get them fixed. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get all these installed, get the little key binding set up, and then we are going to work through the script merger of all of them together. All right, now that I've got all the mods that I want installed for The Witcher 3 ready to go, we are now ready to merge all the scripts so the game will function and run beautifully. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and launch the script merger tool. It'll go ahead and do its thing. Now, as you can see, we have a pretty long list of scripts that need merged. Now down here, these are not mergeable. This is basically just conflicts between textures, but uh, we went ahead and downloaded the adequate compatibility between these two mods. So this is not worrisome. If you get this and you're not sure what it is, Go to each of the mods web pages and find out the details and potential compatibility conflicts with each other and um, people that will help you out. All you have to do is ask the right questions. What we're going to do is just check the scripts box and we're going to go ahead and start the process. We have 21 total merges that need to be made. So far so good. We will have a handful of pop ups, no doubt. All right, here's our first one here. It's actually fairly easy, so we're going to take it from B. This is the vanilla. This is the friendly HUD mod. This is new games plus combat, but it's completely empty. This is the result, so we're going to take it from friendly combat. I mean, <laughs> friendly HUD. So let's go ahead and close this, save and exit. All right, we're going to keep going. We're on 11, 12, 13, and there we go. We got a pop-up. All right, this one, we've uh, covered this one before, so we're just going to copy this. I'm going to use B, and then I'm just going to drop it right at the end. All right, there we go. So we're going to go ahead and save and exit. All right, this one has two conflicts. I believe we've covered this before as well. So we're just going to select from B, 
and paste. Go ahead and fix that. And we're going to move to the next unresolved conflict, which is this one here. And as previous, we're going to paste. We're going to select from B. Stick it in there. Get rid of those. We're going to save and quit. And we're almost there in the home stretch. There we go. One conflict. We got the slot, slot, slots menu versus regular slot, slot, slots. You want the menu to override the base mod. So we're going to go select from A. We're going to close, save and quit. And there we go. We got everything merged. And now let's see if the game likes what we did. Let's go ahead and run the game. It should... Uh, Parse all the scripts and with luck launch the game without any problems. Up oh, there we go. Let's go ahead and skip, skip, skip. And it looks like everything is absolutely beautiful. Now, there's a few things I want to cover with you guys that you may come across in the process of modding The Witcher 3. The first one here in the mods menu, if you get to a point where you transcend more than what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine or ten mods, and you have to start scrolling to get the whole list visible, the final one won't work unless you conceal the, the word back. You have to scroll up till the last one is just visible, then you can click on it. I think it's just a menu limitation of The Witcher 3. But as you can see, I don't have enough to cause a scroll, so I'm not having any problems. But if you're having that problems, that's how you kind of get around it. There's no real fix for it other than just dealing with it. All right, there are a few other things that I want to go over, but uh, we'll handle that on the desktop. Okay, now we know the game loads. Everything seems to be okay. Now, I'm giving you guys a little bit of advice if you come across errors while you're attempting to mod the game. If you launch the game and it just disappears, it's not it's not on your desktop, you don't see an icon. And if you open, let's open up the task manager here. If you open up your task manager, and you look through all your processes and you notice that the Witcher 3 is somewhere like way down the line here and you actually have to like click and end task to uh, close it. That is usually caused by having too many texture mods installed. That is one of the causes of that happening. In fact, the primary cause. Next thing, if you run to, if you start the game and it's completely black screen, well, that is typically caused by too many mods, period. Too many script mods, too many texture mods, whatever it may be. But typically that's a result of too many mods that have scripts or non-texture mods that cause that. If you uh, launch the game and it seems to work, you start a new game and during the opening cinematic, you can't bypass it. You have no, stop that. I'm, 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 I'm spam hitting the space bar here. There's no space bar to bypass the cinematic. That is typically a result of, uh, so let me go ahead and show you this right here. See how it says space to skip. If you're not getting that during, when you start a new game, let's go to fresh start. It doesn't matter what we choose actually. And you're not getting to this little, let me tap the, there, space to skip. If you're not getting that, that is typically caused by you have too many mods in your load order. You're like right on the border. You've gone over it by one or you're pressed right against it. So what you need to do is you need to prune your load order. You need to really decide what you want to have in your Witcher 3 game and what is necessary. As I said before, there's really not a lot that the game needs. The best mods for The Witcher 3 are things that really adjust things in the in the UI and maybe changes some of the mechanics of the game to kind of fit better with what you like. Like I have some more enhancements for skills, for the camera. Um, I like some additions for combat, to be the ability of the jump. Um, I don't like splatter all over my screen. I know some people like that effect, I don't. So I really focused on those kind of additions. I didn't really go for anything overly trivial because I believe I got the game looking absolutely great as it is. All right, with all that aside, we seem to have everything modded and working fantastic. Now, my final mod count, including the merge packs, because those do count, is 29. Now, some people say, well, the cap is 24, 25. Not necessarily. It really depends on what mod you have installed 
how many of them are texture files, how many of them you can merge. There is a, a wide variety. So for this particular build, I got up to 29 stable mods, and I am actually very, very happy with it. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to jump into the game just briefly, and we're going to go to a nice grassy open area, and I'm going to show you the final results of our modded game. All right, guys, here we are in White Orchard. Taking a look around. This is uh, an area most of you should be familiar with if you've played The Witcher 3. We're heading towards the beautiful sunrise right here. As you can see, we got some uh, high res 4K grass. It looks great. My frames per second is holding pretty nice. As you can see, it looks terrific. The entire game just looks beautiful. And that's with the uh, textures that come with The Witcher 3. Using the Tweaks mod, of course, it is absolutely astounding. Now, you could use that mod to adjust the game to look as beautiful as it can be while maintaining a playable frame rate. I am actually very happy with all of this. Now, there are some settings that you can see right away, but there are others that you may have to actually restart the game to get its full effect, even if it doesn't prompt you to do so. Let's go ahead and look at the water. Now, I have the settings completely cranked up. I'm sure I could get the game looking decent and my frame rate to stay at a solid 60, because right now it's jumping between 52 and 60 but i have enhanced the settings to be titanically higher than the basic uh ultra settings that came with the uh, witcher 3 stock yeah it looks fantastic all right guys i hope you found this uh pretty long video helpful if you did go ahead and please leave me a comment down below i could definitely use the feedback and the encouragement and any suggestions that you guys have for my channel. Alright guys, this is Talem, and I will see you in the next modding video. Sweet.